Yeah, there is tremendous irony in the fact that Wilmer McLean is living in this house on April 9th, 1865. He ended up being essentially the bookends of the Civil War with the, uh, with the surrender being signed in his front parlor. We start with the final days of the Civil War to begin the story of Wilmer McLean. That's one of the bookends. Oh, it's a huge coincidence. The other bookend, the beginning. That's where some of the confusion begins as well. Uh, there are lots of versions of the story. I mean, I literally have heard Paul Harvey tell this story. He started out living in the Manassas area as of 1861 and felt that the war had come a little bit too close to his home when the first Battle of Manassas broke out, so he decided to move to somewhere he thought was going to be a little safer. Appomattox Courthouse Park Ranger Ernie Price says there is some truth to that, but through the years, a few liberties have been taken with the story. It's just too juicy to think of McLean and his family dodging bullets up at first Manassas, fleeing Manassas to keep his family safe, and then moves to Appomattox. And then the, the armies come back and, and uh, have the surrender in his parlor. The McLeans did live a few miles from the Manassas battlefield at a plantation called Yorkshire. Let's face it, if Virginians in 1861 and 2 started moving because of physical danger, there wouldn't have been anybody left in the state. His argument is McLean's move was more about protecting his business ventures than the romantic notion of protecting his family from danger. McLean, McLean again, interesting character. He seems to have been a sugar speculator during, during the war. While there are different interpretations as to why why McLean ended up at Appomattox, there is no dispute about this home's place in history. As Lee's men traveled west toward Lynchburg, they passed through Appomattox Courthouse. On the morning of April the 9th, the Army of Northern Virginia fought its final battle, falling to Grant's soldiers who set up in the acres surrounding the village. Around noon that day, Lee's aide, Charles Marshall, went in search of a dwelling suitable to host the surrender. He found a man and told him what he needed and through some conversation eventually realized he was talking to a man named Warmer McLean and that he owned arguably the nicest home in town and so Marshall made the decision that that's where the meeting needed to be. Simply put, history found McLean's doorstep once again. For Union men, I can't stress enough, they believed that Providence, God, had favored the righteous in this key moment. Elizabeth Varon is a history professor at the University of Virginia and the author of Appomattox. The fact that the surrender happens in the home of a man whose original home was on the battlefield where the first great Confederate victory had happened. To Union men, this is symbolic of a great divine retribution. The surrender for Southern businessmen was a, was a great leveler. And those that had the most to lose lost the most. And I think the McLeans lost quite a bit. What Confederate money the McLeans had was now worthless. Their slaves, which had been considered valuable property, were now emancipated. Even the items inside the parlor where Grant and Lee signed the papers were taken from them as souvenirs. But he was losing tables and losing all sorts of furnishings because people knew it was going to be a very significant event and they wanted to have that, that memento. Yeah, he's wearing the same clothes, hat, kerchief around his neck. so. Inside a vault at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., 150-year-old original images of McLean and his family on their front porch are safely tucked away. The home people visit today is not the original. It had fallen into disrepair after the McLeans moved back to Northern Virginia after the war. In 1891, a company out of Niagara, New York, bought it speculating uh, on this property. And their idea was to take the home apart and move it to Washington, D.C., where they could, in theory, you know, rebuild it and then charge people money to see it. A company in Lynchburg was hired to dismantle the home piece by piece and to make detailed drawings of it so it could be reassembled. But the project was scrapped when a nationwide depression hit in 1893. Several decades later, the property became part of the National Park Service. After World War II, the project to rebuild the home began again. It's part of the foundation is original. Over 5,000 bricks are original. The drawings that were made of the home when it was taken apart were used to rebuild it. When we say that this is where Lee and Grant met, we mean to the inch. This is where they met. Uh, and and I, I think it's more than just a reconstruction. The perfect backdrop 
for the sesquicentennial anniversary of the surrender. So here we are, 150 years later, uh, the McLean House behind me, and no doubt uh, this is what people want to see when they come to Appomattox Courthouse.